Put your hands together right now. So the team, everybody. How we doing, everybody? Yeah. This is it. This is what I paid for. <laughs> it's pretty good. I like this. So let's get some things out of the way. All right. So some of you guys may not know me. Uh, some of you guys may know me. Here's my big comedy credits. He has trusted me that I'm recording an album. <laughs> so I don't know if you know this. Uh, anytime they hire, uh, anytime they actually film a live show, Right, uh, like game show, talk show, whatever, they hire what is called a warm-up comedian, right? That's to keep the, the crowd hot, to do jokes, you know, to make it good. Uh, I got hired to be the warm-up comedian for the Paula Deen cooking show. <laughs> In 2023, that is not a credit, all right? <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> I'm from Savannah, Georgia, where Paula Deen records, right? And uh, that's where I started comedy. And uh, I got this crazy opportunity that uh, they asked me if I would open to warm up the show for the Paula Deen cooking show. And I was not a Paula Deen fan. But I was like, this is a crazy opportunity, right? And I got to say yes. Not a fan of her. But they, but they also offered me a lot of money. <laughs> they paid me $2,000 in Confederate money, which is pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Where I'm from in the South, they're like, that's like Bitcoin, dude. You need to hang on to it. <laughs> it's going to be worth more later. You got to invest early. <laughs> if you can't tell, I got fired from the Paula Deen cooking show real fast. <laughs> Took me three days to get fired, to be completely honest. I got fired for a bunch of things. Uh, I kind of built up problems. Uh, the one problem, the first one, uh, they got really angry at me for was I kept telling people, uh, that I was getting paid in Confederate money. <laughs> Not big fans of that at the Paula Deen cooking show, I gotta be honest. It's like fair. I also got in a little bit of trouble. This one wasn't that bad, but I thought it was just silly. Uh, I got in trouble because I kept referring to baby Jesus as young Jeezy. I thought that was silly. All right, I didn't know I'd get in trouble for that. But the thing that got me fired, the thing that got me fucking fired, was I was telling Paula Deen's audience that I was Paula Deen's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Thought it was funny. I'd go on stage and introduce myself as Brandon Dean, by the way. And I had never met Paula Deen in my life. I swear on my life, this is a true story. Never met her in my life. I'm standing in her house where they filmed that cooking show. And I tell her audience that I'm Brandon Dean. <laughs> Never met Paula. But she hears me do this from behind the stage and comes out and charges me. Just like right now. Like if she just came out of nowhere and charged me and she just walks up to me and goes, were you telling people you were my boyfriend? <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and she goes, well, you can move in. <laughs> I was like, I could use a little butter money. Hell yeah. <laughs> and this is recorded. I go, uh, which room's mine? <laughs> and she goes, the one with my bed in it. <laughs> I was like, whoa, <laughs> Wait, am, I, am I about to hook up with Paula Deen? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think I'm flying too close to the sun right now. Uh, if I came here tonight and told you guys I hooked up with Paula Deen, you guys would be like, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a lateral move for both of you guys. <laughs> Nobody gained anything from that transaction. I didn't hook up with Paula Deen. She wouldn't have me. Also, if I did, I wouldn't open up with it. That'd be my big closer. <laughs> like, yeah. I wouldn't even be here tonight if I had Paula Deen money, right? So here I am. Do we have Southern people here? Round of applause, any Southern people? 
All right, just the one guy waving a gun at me? All right, whatever. I'm just kidding, he's my ride. He's a cool guy. I've been in Chicago for nine years. I love it in Chicago. Chicago's, yeah, Chicago's a great city. But here's the thing, I, I love it up here. I moved up here, I got out of the South, I moved up here, and the thing is, you guys, love you guys, but you gotta stop trying to bring progress down south. <laughs> Leave them alone, you won the war, all right? You don't need to bother them. They can get a bus ticket and come up here if they want progress, all right? They don't want it. You're sore winners, is what I call it. You kept, you remember, the, you kept trying to make them believe in COVID, that's on you guys. <laughs> That's for sure you. You're the smarter side. You should know better. The high school I went to didn't believe in evolution, all right? I get why they don't believe in COVID. They're not gonna wear a mask at Walmart. They don't believe in dinosaurs. I will give them credit. We did have a big moment down there. Uh, black and white people, we came together there for a solid moment. We had a big moment. Uh, we had Old Town Road. Do you remember that song? <laughs> I don't know why I pointed at you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I looked right at you. I'm sorry. My bad. Do you remember Old Town Road? <laughs> Interracial couple. I think they. That's their song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're gonna slow dance to it at their wedding, and I love that. I love that for you. It was a big moment. But then the South found out little Nas X was gay, and they're like, you fucking tricked us. <laughs> Black or gay, one at a time. Our kids are dancing to this music right now. <laughs> you put too much on them at one time. The one thing I don't support with the South was doing uh, they had those Confederate statues. Remember that? That was a very ignorant time. I'm not proud of that time. A lot of people in the South were very angry about these. There's a very famous one in North Carolina. I don't know if you remember this. It was a Confederate soldier. It was a Confederate soldier, Robert E. Lee, on a horse. It was a statue that was in front of a courthouse. You guys remember this, right? And they tore the whole statue down, and people lost their minds in the South. And look, I get why you get rid of Robert E. Lee. I would never argue that. That makes sense. But what did the horse do? <laughs> do you have to do the whole thing? You know what I mean? Like, the horse just thought he was being a good boy, you know? He didn't know that it, like, he knew a ra you know, he, I don't know. He tore, it was a big moment, he got a statue, you know what I mean? Like, and you tore it down because he knew a racist guy, and that's what, that's what I realized, I was like, I'll never have a statue, like. <laughs> But I'm just like, I, what did the horse do? You know what I mean? Like, you can't train a horse to be racist, right? My family tried. You can't do it. <laughs> they gave it their all. It doesn't matter how many carrots you give him. He's going to like everybody. We have the clan down south, which is a terrible thing. It's a, it's a dumb thing. But you know what's the dumbest part about the clan? Is that they used to put hoods on the horses. <laughs> For what? In case you recognize him in public? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Are you at the Walgreens and you see a horse, you're like, holy shit, is that Seabiscuit from the rally, dude? <laughs> He is fast. <laughs> Just saying. The South did do a good job on one thing. Homophobia. They're coming around, dude. I love it. My generation did a lot of work on our parents. Like, and they are coming around on homophobia. I think in 2023, 20, if you're homophobic, it sticks out. It's not a part of life anymore. Can we agree with that? Like, it, it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> It's ridiculous. My best friend, her dad, crazy homophobic guy. He's an older dude. He's so homophobic that he won't drink out of a straw. <laughs> I don't 
don't care. If you don't think that's funny, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> He's an adult man. And if you give him a drink with a straw in it, he just goes, Kenny Porter don't suck on nothing. <laughs> You're not gonna suck on nothing, Kenny? What the fuck? <laughs> what are you gonna do when Titty show up? You gonna punch him away? Because <laughs> you don't want people thinking you like dudes, man? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You're not gonna drink a milkshake, Kenny? What are you talking about right now? <laughs> Here's the thing, Kenny Porter is in his late 80s. He doesn't have a lot of time left in this world. And I know there's gonna be this moment in his life when he's on his deathbed, right? In the hospital, worn out, just tired and thirsty. <laughs> and a nurse is gonna walk in with a big old glass of water <laughs> with a big old fat straw hanging off the side of it. And Kenny Porter is gonna have to combat a lifetime of demons in this one moment. <laughs> know he's gonna drink out of that straw. <laughs> For the first time in his life, he's gonna drink out of that straw. And I hope I'm there. <laughs> I hope I'm there. So I'm just gonna walk by and be like, gay! <laughs> gay! You straw-drinking homosexual! You were going to hell, Kenny! Suck it! Gay! Yeah, I just like yelling gay. I'm oh, sorry. You don't get to do that anymore. <laughs> do we have married people in the audience? Round of applause. There we go. There we go. I just hit my three year wedding anniversary. Let me tell the story, all right? Don't clap yet. <laughs> this is my night, all right? <laughs> no. Uh, been married for three years. My wife is here, this is really cool. And I thought it would be a special night, you know? And uh, when we moved recently, we were going through some things and I found an old love letter. I found the first love letter that I ever wrote my wife. And I thought, you know what would be hilarious? So I came here and read it for you guys. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> but I was like, it's my special. Like, well, you know, let's do this, all right? So you guys believe in love? Yeah! Dear Hannah, you were the prettiest girl in the fifth grade. It's pretty good, right? Hold on, hold on, it's about to get saucy. I'm the boy that pushed you down in the playground and tried to kiss you. My name is Brandon Kiefer. I am 35 years old. <laughs> We're still together, isn't that cute? <laughs> All right, enough. I'm a prop comic, I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> There's more props to come. All right, cut, that's enough. I drive in the city a lot. I love driving in the city, it's a lot easier. But uh, the problem is with the city, uh, I don't know if you ever had a boot on your car. They'll do that, yeah. I had a boot on my car over Christmas, it was brutal. Uh, but I didn't have the money to pay for the boot, which is like this terrible thing, but I need to go to work, I'm broke, I don't have any money, I can't borrow the money, I'm desperate, I don't know what to do. So I'm like, last ditch effort, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write a letter to the city of Chicago. And I figured it'd be really cool if I read it for you guys. Today. <laughs> it's a different letter. Dear city of Chicago, you are the prettiest city in the fifth grade. <laughs> My name is Brandon Kiefer. I am a registered sex offender. <laughs> I'm having a hard time finding work. Can you please take this boot off for me?
I ain't married, though. My, my wife, uh, she's originally from Germany, which is really cool. Uh, when we met, she lived in Germany. And uh, we've been together for three years. She's, she's, we're getting to the point where she's talking about having kids and all this. And I'm like, I don't know, man. You're from Germany. I'm from the South. Our families don't have, like, a great history. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, babe, do we really want to bring kids into this world that can't win a war? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think there's enough losers out there, all right? <laughs> we should adopt. <laughs> but uh, like I said, she's from Germany. Uh, and when she moved in with me, I lived in Bucktown, right around the corner from here, right? Um, and when she moved in with me, uh, like I said, she's from Germany, she wasn't used, she'd never lived in Chicago, so she wasn't used to this whole rat thing we've got going on in the city, right? Because in Germany, they have mice. They don't have these things we have, all right? And I gotta be honest, uh, in my basement, I had some rats in my basement living there. I'm from Georgia. They didn't, I don't mind wildlife. It didn't bother me at all. <laughs> I like animals. They were there before me. I'm not gonna kick them out. My wife and I were both big animal lovers. You know, she moves in, the rats bothered her, and she's like, the rats gotta go. I'm like, all right. But she's like, we can't kill them. Oh, what do you want me to do then? <laughs> you want me to go talk to the rats? Like, <laughs> do you want me to go to the pet store and buy some white rats and move them in so the rent goes up? I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> Don't act like I invented Chicago. <laughs> I'm playing by your rules, okay? <laughs> no, but you saw online, we both saw these videos online, I don't know if you've seen these, of these humane traps, right? Where they're, they're catching mice, though. I'm like, babe, those are mice. We're talking about city rats right now. We're not gonna catch city rats with a Home Depot bucket, okay? <laughs> they're from Chicago. They're only gonna respond to murder. I don't know what you want. <laughs> That little rat has a gun. I'm not fucking with these goddamn rats. <laughs> but also, what are we gonna do when we catch a bucket full of rats <laughs> that we can't kill? I was like, you wanna put them in hamster balls and let them loose in Bucktown? <laughs> like, <laughs> and she's like, well, we gotta take them two miles away so they don't follow us back. And then we let them loose and they're gonna have a better life. I'm like, we don't have a fucking car. <laughs> what are you talking about right now? <laughs> I'm not gonna walk a bucket of rats to Jefferson Park, all right? Like, we're not outside of the city, babe. Like, that's not a better life. That's me dumping rats in some other guy's backyard and running back to Bucktown. <laughs> and she's like, well, you could, you could take them on the train. I said, fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm not taking a bucket of rats on the train. Cause you know if I take a bucket of rats on the train, there's gonna be another guy on the train with a bucket of rats and he's gonna try to talk to me. <laughs> he's gonna come over and be like, hey man, I see you're a collector as well. <laughs> What, what are you gonna do with your rats? <laughs> and I don't need that in my life. <laughs> so I made the humane trap for my wife because I love her and I wanted to prove a point. So here's what the humane trap is. It's a Home Depot bucket with a paint roller on top, right? And my wife put peanut butter on it and the rats climb up this little ladder we made them, right? And they eat the peanut butter and they fall in the bucket and they jump right the fuck back out. Because they are dog-sized animals. <laughs> and then my wife's like, oh, we're out of peanut butter. We gotta put more peanut butter on there. And they just eat the peanut butter. And this went on for a month. I'm like, babe, we should put a couch down there. Like, these rats, they're not gonna leave. They love us. We're feeding the rats right now. Why would they leave? <laughs> It went on for a month. And then finally I was like, I'm done with this rat thing. I'm done with it, I'm over it.
I'm going to do what I know how to do, which is wait for my wife to go to work <laughs> and buy four giant rat traps. And I did that. And I set them out in my basement, and I put peanut butter in the four traps, and I waited about an hour, I think, and I caught four giant rats. No, it felt awful. It, felt, it didn't feel good. I felt like genocide. I got to be honest. Like, because what I realized is because we had been doing this humane thing for the past month, that we had gained the rat's trust. <laughs> yeah, I felt hor I felt, I turned on my dudes, man. Like, I was like, I'm the rat in the house. I don't have a big finale for that because me and my wife are still fighting over these rats right now. <laughs> it's kind of a big point of contention in our relationship. I don't know. Back in a, like, you'll see me in a month and I'll be like, I got divorced over the rats. I don't know. I really don't know where we're at with it right now. <laughs> I did, uh, I've always had dogs. I'm a big pit bull guy. You guys like pit bulls? Yeah, they're babies. I love it. They're great dogs. But, uh, so my first dog, I got when I was 20 years old. Um, it was the first time I ever owned a dog on my own and I got to name the dog on my own, which I realize is a mistake when you're 20 years old. Living in Georgia, it was hilarious when I named the dog. Uh, I named him Killer, okay, right? And then I moved to Chicago, and that was not funny ever again. <laughs> He's a very sweet dog, but I named him Killer. I thought it was hilarious. And then I moved to Humboldt Park. I learned a bad lesson. <laughs> My male lady, very sweet lady. I talked to her every day. We had a relationship with each other. One day, I go to get my mail, right? I leave my front door cracked a little bit by accident. My dog slips out. And I think, no big deal, sweet dog. And I just go, kill her. <laughs> I had never thought about it. <laughs> never, I swear, I'd never thought about it. But the male lady thought about it immediately. And she looked at me, she looked down at the dog, and she just takes off fucking running, dude. And my dog's like, I'm not gonna miss out on a good time. So he starts chasing her. <laughs> and I'm running after both of them with no idea, and I'm just going, kill her! <laughs> Killer! I got to see the male lady's will to live. It was a block and a half. Before she stopped, she's like, fuck it, let the dog eat me. I don't, I don't like the post office. I didn't get mail for two months after that. <laughs> She crossed the street when she got near my house. But then I had, uh, I had puppies with Killer. Wait, not me directly, but like. <laughs> another dog. <laughs> right. And I had one of his daughters, right? Uh, so I, br I brought both, of the, uh, both my dogs up here to Chicago. Uh, and his daughter's name was Ava, very sweet dog. But uh, here's what I learned. So Killer I had for 16 and a half years, which is wild for a pit bull, that ruled. He never got sick, I just eventually, he just got worn out and I had to put him down, which was terrible. <laughs> but then I had his daughter for about eight years, uh, and I learned a bad lesson about the city too, is like, I don't know if you ever, if you own a pet in the city, or ever had to take him to the veterinarian, it is a racket, by the way. I don't know if you know this. It is a complete racket. So Ava, one day, she starts limping, right? Starts not feeling good, I freak out, because I love my dog so much, that I rushed her to the veterinarian over here in Logan Square, okay? I won't tell you the name. Just say Logan Square and Veterinarian, and you'll get it, though. <laughs> That's the name of it. <laughs> but I give him the dog, and I'm like, hey, this is my dog. You know, like, she's limping. She's in a lot of pain. I need to figure out something. And he goes, okay, we're going to keep her for three days. We're going to run some tests, and it's going to be $1,200. I don't know if I give you the vibe. I'm not a $1,200 kind of guy, right? <laughs> My dog looked me in the eyes and she goes, am I gonna fucking die, dude? Like, <laughs> she's like, I've never seen him with that much money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there arguing with the vet. I'm like, $1,200, it's a lot of money, man. What are you gonna do with the money? I don't know, what, you know, like I'm, I'm nervous. You know, there's a lot of money. And this is when he hit me. This is how you know you're getting ripped off by a veterinarian. If you ever hear him say this, he goes, this is a member of your family. Do you want to put a price on a member of your family? I'm like, you're the one throwing around numbers, dude. 
You said $1,200. I don't got $1,200 people in my family. I got a lot of $300 people in my family. My mom's $1,200 for sure. We're not throwing around numbers. You just called my dog a 98 Honda Accord to my face. And it just so happened, I swear, that I got my tax return back and I had the $1,200 and somehow the dog knew that. I don't know how, but she knew. And I paid him the $1,200, but I explained to him, I was like, look, man, this is all the money I have. Like, I need to make a plan. Like, if at any point you, you think it's gonna cost more money, like, let me know, because this is all the money I have. I just want to do the right thing. I don't want to drag this out, you know? Uh, and uh, I was like, so I gave the money and I come back three days later to pick up my dog. And he goes, uh, we don't know what's wrong with her. Oh. She's gonna need to go to a specialist. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I don't got specialist money, all right? Like, I had $1,200, all right? I was like, can we maybe give my dog like some painkillers for like a couple weeks to hold her over so she's not in pain, so I can maybe save up money or figure out what I'm gonna do? And he goes, this is a member of your family. <laughs> do you really wanna get her addicted to pills? <laughs> I'm like, pills? We're worried about pills right now, dude? You don't know my family at all. <laughs> like, pills? What do we think? My dog's gonna get pilled up and say something racist on Facebook? What the fuck are we talking about? Like, yeah, give the dog the fucking pills, dude. Yeah. Give her the painkillers. Get her strung out. Who gives a shit? It's a dog. Right? Make her, make her comfortable. And he does. And he gives me the two weeks for the painkillers. And I go home. And honestly, what's happening? is that I'm facing the fact that I gotta put my dog down, which is an awful thing, terrible thing. Uh, I don't know if you ever had to put your dog down in this city, or an animal, cat, whatever. It's about three to $400. And I know this because I spent a whole day pricing that shit out. <laughs> like price shopping around. And I called all over the place, and one guy's like, it's $300, another guy's like, it's $400, $300, $400. And I called this one place, and the guy was like, it's $75. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's too cheap, dude. Like, I think it's just the Polish guy with a hammer. Like, to be completely honest. He's like, meet me in the garage. I'll make the dog sleep. All right, no. Nope, nope. We're not doing this. I love my animal. I'm going to spend the $400, dude. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm having to go back to work. I'm having to save up all this money, you know, to get to the $300, $400 mark, you know? And I'm like, I'm gonna spend the money on this, do it the right way. Uh, and the second day I'm at work, uh, my dog, she could barely move originally, but she started eating the pink, started feeling better. And uh, she gets up while I'm at work, goes and chews the bottle of painkillers open, and eats all two weeks worth of painkillers. And I come home with this bottle just all over the ground, all the painkillers gone, I'm freaking out. I call the vet, I'm like, hey man, Oh my God, this dog just ate all these painkillers. What do I do? He's like, oh my God, you should bring her in and we can save her. She's going to die if we don't save her. And I'm like. <laughs> Wait, I think about it, put her down, right? Like, why would I save her and then put her down again? Like, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. This is fucking awful. But why would I save my dog and kill her a week later? That didn't make any goddamn sense. I was like, this is awful, but financially kind of fantastic. Have I got to be honest? <laughs> got to be honest? My dog's kind of doing me a solid right now. I didn't give her the pills, okay, right? <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to bring her in and save her life and then kill her again. <laughs> so you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to let her go out like a rock star. I'm going to let her overdose. <laughs> I didn't give her the pills. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just let it happen naturally, and we're gonna have one last great night. We're gonna hang out all night long. I'm gonna make her some food. We're gonna have a great night, and then in, that's it. So that's what we did. We had a, one final <laughs> night. I wake up the next morning. My dog's not moving. She's just laying there completely still, and I start crying. But it's like this huge weight that's off my chest, and this is over with. I'm glad it's just done. And my dog lifts her head up and she's like, what the fuck happened last night? <laughs> I was like, that is a member of my goddamn family. <laughs> Look at that tolerance. <laughs> Hell yeah, thank you guys very much. Have a good night.